looking at lesson 7.5, factoring x squared plus bx plus c. Now, right away in the essential question, I have some questions for you. It says, how can you factor the trinomial? So the first word that should look familiar to you is the word trinomial. We learned that a trinomial has what? Three terms. Three terms, all right? And you can see that from the formula right here, x squared plus bx plus c, all right? Now, let me ask you this question. When you're looking at this formula, there is nothing in front of x squared. So if I were to ask you for the leading coefficient of this formula, what would you tell me? A 1. There is an understood 1. So we're focusing today on trinomials that have a leading coefficient of 1. The method of factoring that I'm going to teach you today will only work if it's a trinomial and the leading coefficient is a 1. Now, let's keep reading the question. How can you factor the trinomial x squared plus bx plus c into the product? Here's the next word. The product is the answer to what type of a question? Multiplication. Multiplication. So if we're factoring, or when we are factoring, we're turning the trinomial into a multiplication problem, right? Because we want a product, which is the answer to a multiplication problem. Let's keep reading. How can you factor the trinomial x squared plus bx plus c into the product of two binomials? There's another word that we learned in the first half of this chapter. What do we know about a binomial? It has two terms, all right? So we're going to take a trinomial and we're going to turn it into a multiplication problem made up of two binomials. That's what the essential question is telling us. Now, a couple of things to review. Do you remember FOIL? And I hope you say yes because you just took a test over it yesterday. Let's go through FOIL really quickly. The F stands for first term. The O stands for outside. The I stands for and the L stands for so FOIL worked when you were given two binomials and you were multiplying them, right? I gave you a problem, an example, x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now, just to throw this in there, maybe you realized this already. Do you realize that all we were doing was distributing? We were doing the distributive property with FOIL. Because look, if we distribute, we do x times x, those were your first terms, and then we do x times 3, those were your outside terms. Then we do 2 times x, so those were your inside terms, and 2 times 3, which was your last terms. So essentially, we called it FOIL, but you were really just distributing right here in order to solve this. But here's my question. When we used the FOIL method, what did our final answer look like? Because we were multiplying two binomials, but we always ended up with what as our answer? A trinomial, okay? Remember, foiling got us four terms, but what was always true about those two middle terms? They were, like terms? they were like terms that we always ended up combining, which gave us a final answer that was a trinomial. So when I ask you the question, what did our final answer look like? It looked like a trinomial. Now, the reason that I'm making you think about those things is because look at the next statement in your notes. Factoring is the opposite of foil. Factoring is the opposite of foil. So I want you to highlight that. Factoring, opposite, and FOIL. We take a problem that looks like x squared plus 9x plus 20. So we take a trinomial and we make it look like x plus 5 times x plus 4. So we're taking a trinomial and we're putting it back uh, into a multiplication problem with two binomials. All right, is everybody with me so far? Just trying to get you to understand that factoring is the opposite of foiling. All right? Now, let's look at choosing the right signs. Because listen to me, if you cannot choose the right signs, your whole answer is going to be wrong. Okay? So this is why we're focusing on the signs first. It says, if you look at each of the blue statements in the lesson, it says, when the second sign is. Do you see that? When the second sign is and when the second sign is. So, what are we going to be looking at first in these problems? Definition. The second sign. Okay, good. So here's what we're going to do. Take that highlighter and highlight. When the second sign is positive, go all the way to the positive. When the second sign is positive, then in the second statement, again, when the second sign is positive, and in the third statement, when the second sign is negative. 
Now let's look what happens. Okay, because remember, our final answer is going to be two binomials that are being multiplied together. So here's what happens. When the second sign is positive, the signs will be the same. So I want you to highlight the word same. The second statement, when the second sign is positive, it says again, the sign will be the same. But look what happens when the second sign is negative. What does that say? When the second sign is negative, the signs will be different. So we're going to highlight different. All right, now we're highlighting certain pieces because we want those pieces to stand out. Now, you'll notice that after the first statement, when the second sign is positive, the signs will be the same. I've given you two sets of parentheses, and there's a plus sign inside each of them. But when you look down at the second statement, it says when the si second sign is positive, the signs will be the same. But I've given you two sets of parentheses with two minus signs. So how do you tell when the signs are both positive or when the signs are both negative? Well, look at the arrow that I've given you, given you in the notes. Do you see? Above the second sign, I've drawn an arrow back to the what sign? The first sign. Okay? So we look at the second sign. Once we decide, oh, the signs are going to be the same, we look back at the first sign, and that tells us what they will both be. All right? But look at the third statement. When the second sign is negative, the signs will be different. Did I draw you any kind of arrow? Is it necessary to look back at the first sign if I know my signs are going to be different? They're going to be different. One's plus, one's minus. All right? And you see that down here. When the second sign is negative, the signs will be different. So one binomial will have a plus, one binomial will have a minus. Now, again, the more we practice this and we look at this, the easier it's going uh, to come. But you've got this reference sheet in front of you. So as we move through the lesson, Feel free to flip back. Until you've got it memorized, I want you to flip back and I want you to look at your notes. Now, here are the steps to factoring. And you're going to notice in your notes that the X, uh, the spaces between the uh, X printed out very, very dark. So here's what I want you to do. Right beside the picture on, in your notes, go ahead and draw your own X. All right? You can draw it as, you probably want to draw it about the same size as I have it on the paper. Because right now, we're filling in actual words. You've got to know what goes in what spot on the X. Okay? Now you'll notice at the top of the X, we are going to be putting the coefficient of X in that spot. And you notice I have X in quotes because is the problem always going to have a variable of X? No. It might have a W or a Y or a Z. Okay? So whatever the variable, the coefficient of that variable is going to go at the top of our X. Now look at the bottom. What's going at the bottom of our x? The constant, all right? What do you remember about a constant? Because we talked about this during the first half of the chapter as well. What is a constant? If you think about the, the formula, okay? If you think about x squared plus bx plus c, what is the constant? The, no, in the formula, x squared plus bx plus c that I put at the top, which of those pieces is considered the constant? I don't know. C is the constant in this formula, and c does not have a variable. So, if you have forgotten that, okay, because we did talk about it in the beginning, we didn't talk about it a lot, I would also make myself a note next to the word constant, all right? It's a number without a variable. That is your constant. And the constant is going to go at the bottom of your x. Now, there's a couple things going on the side. So make sure you get all of this in your notes or you're going to be real confused later. All right? It says the factor of the constant. And then underneath it, it says plus or minus question mark. When we figure out the signs that we're going to be using in our answer, they're going to go on either side of the x. The sign is going to go on either side. Then we're going to find the factors of the constant, and we're going to have a factor on each side of the x. Now, this is where it gets tricky again, but look at the statement underneath your x. It says factors of the constant must add up to give you the coefficient of x. So this is the key, and this is what I want you to highlight. Factors of the constant add up to give you the coefficient of x. So factors of the constant will add up to give you the coefficient of x. And you know what? Let's do this. Again, let's put little quotes around the word add because if our signs are different, we're not going to be adding. So we're going to use the word add loosely 
but the factors of the constant are going to add up and they're going to give us the coefficient of x. Now, you'll also notice the factors of the constant become the numbers in the parentheses. So that's the second statement. The factors of the constant that we find and put on either side of the x are going to become the numbers in the parentheses. All right, now, I've given you a lot of information. Let's go practice it and see how it all works together. All right, the first thing you've got to recognize, it says factor the polynomial, and that's all it says. So guess what? On a quiz, on a test, it's going to say factor the polynomial at the top. Here's the issue though. You got to pay attention to what type of uh, polynomial you're dealing with because today we're working with trinomials that have a leading coefficient of one. But guess what? By the time you take a quiz next week or a test, there's going to be all the different types of polynomials mixed in together. So you've got to, you've got to focus on what kind of polynomial you're dealing with. So with that in mind, look at letter A. What type of polynomial do we have? A trinomial, and what is the leading coefficient? One, because guess what? Next week we're going to learn about how to factor when the leading coefficient is not a one and the steps change, okay? So that's why it's important. It's a trinomial, the leading coefficient is a one. So guess what? When I know it's a trinomial, I know the leading coefficient is one, I go straight to drawing my x. Now you can draw your x as big as you want. Keep in mind we're now filling in numbers, so it doesn't have to be so huge. All right, so we draw our x and we are immediately going to focus on the signs. We're going to find the signs first because everything else hinges on the signs that we're going to use. So which of the signs in the original problem are we supposed to be looking at first? So highlight the second symbol, okay, or the second sign. Now the second sign in this problem is, is a positive. So our signs are going to be what? Uh, no, no, you're telling me what they're going to be. Good. We got to figure out if they're the same or if they're different first. Because if they're the same, they could be positive or negative. We don't know yet. But our focus is it's a positive, so we know our signs are going to be the same. Where do we have to look to figure out if they're both positive or they're both negative? Back at the first sign. So draw yourself an arrow back to the first sign. Now, we see that they're both going to be what? Positive. So we're going to fill in a positive sign on both sides of the x. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop that coefficient of x and we're going to fill in the constant. So what is the coefficient of x from the problem? 7. I heard you hesitate. Remember, you've got an x squared and you've got an x. The top of the x is the coefficient of x, not x squared. Okay? So it literally just drops right from the original problem down into the x. What is the constant of this problem? Six, so it goes at the bottom. Now, we need factors of the constant. So which number are we finding factors of? Which one's the constant? The six. So right to the side, okay, and yes, you must show me this, we're going to find all the factors of six. And we're going to start with one, and we're going to work our way until our numbers start repeating. So if we start with one, we've got one times what will give us six? Six. Okay, remember factors are the numbers in a multiplication problem. Then we move on to 2, 2 times 3, and 3 times, but 3 is already up there, so once our numbers start repeating, we found all the factors. Here's the next question. Are we going to be adding the factors together, or are we going to be subtracting them? Now remember, the factors are supposed to add up to give me the coefficient. So what two numbers can I add together to get the 7? That's at the top of our x. One and six. Now, are we going to be adding the two numbers together? Yes. yes, because the signs are the same. Okay, awesome. So, at this point, since our signs are the same, it does not matter where we fill in the one and where we fill in the six. Now, the only thing left to do is to write our final answer, and our final answer is supposed to be two binomials. So, what is the only piece of the original problem that we haven't really messed with yet? The x squared. So guess what's going to happen with that x squared? We're going to split. How many x's are there if it's x squared? Two. We're going to split them apart. So we're going to put one of the x's in the first binomial and the other x in the second binomial. And all we have left to do is drop the plus 1 and drop the plus 6. Let me ask you this. What if I had done x plus 6 and then x plus 1? Is that okay? 
Absolutely. As long as the right sign is with the right number, it doesn't matter which binomial it's in. Two letter B together. First of all, what type of polynomial are we dealing with here? Trinomial and the leading coefficient? One. One. So we can go straight to our X. We can drop our X. Now let's figure out our signs. What are we supposed to look at first in the original problem? So highlight it. And the sign is a positive or a plus, so our signs will be what? The same. the same. But how do we figure out which one they'll be? Look back. Draw yourself an arrow back. So this time, our signs will both be what? Negative. negative. So we're going to fill in a negative on either side of the x. All right? What are we dropping to the top of the x? The coefficient of, it's not an x this time, it's a w. What's the coefficient of w? Negative 4, good. Every number has a sign. The sign's directly in front of it. So that is a negative 4. And the bottom is the constant. What's the constant here? 3. three. Now, we need factors of which number? Three. 3. So over to the side, we're going to list 1 times 3. Are there any other factors of 3? No. Okay, but before we just blindly plug this into the x, we want to check and make sure it still gives us what we need because there is a chance that a trinomial is what we call unfactorable. So we don't just want to assume, oh, there's only two terms, so it works, okay? We still want to ask ourselves the question, can we add 1 and 3 to get the 4 that we need? Yes, we can. 1 plus 3 is 4. And look, because the sign, we know we're adding them because the signs are the same. We don't care that they're negatives. Because if I plug in a 1 and a 3, what is negative 1 minus 3 or negative 1 plus negative 3? It's the negative 4 you need. So you're deciding over here whether you're adding the two numbers or subtracting. Okay? The signs have already been decided for us. So 1 plus 3 absolutely gives us 4. Now, final answer, what's the uh, first binomial going to be? W minus 1, w minus one and... W minus 3. Again, we've got a W squared, so we split it. One W goes in the first binomial, one W goes in the second binomial, and we drop down the factors on the side. When we look at letter C, first question, what type of polynomial are we dealing with? A trinomial, and what is the leading coefficient? One. So we can go straight to dropping down our X. Now, what's the uh, first thing we look at in the original problem? The second sign, so highlight it if you didn't highlight it already. Now, the sign is negative. This is the first time we've seen this. The second sign is negative. So what do we automatically know about the two signs in our answer? They're going to be different. So we've got to make sure that we have one plus and one minus. Now listen, it doesn't matter. I can put the minus on the left and the plus on the right, as long as one is plus and one is minus. All right, what number goes at the top of our x? The coefficient of y in this case. And what goes at the bottom of our x? Negative the negative 30. Now, we're going we're gonna to put the right signs in the x, but here's what I want you to understand. When I go to find those uh, factors of 30, I don't have to worry about the negative. All right? I don't have to worry about the negative. So over to the side, I'm going to list. I'm, again, always going to start with 1. 1 times 30. Then 2 times what? 15. Then 3 times 10. Then uh, 4 times anything? Nope, five times six, and of course, at six, I'm going to start repeating. Now, here's where you've got to be careful. The signs are different. So if the signs are different, are we going to be adding these two factors together that we pick, or are we going to be subtracting them? Subtracting. subtracting. When our signs are different, you learned this back in chapter one. You learned this back in pre-algebra, okay? When the signs are different, we have to subtract and take the sign of the bigger number. So we've got to subtract. So which set of factors would we subtract to get the 13? 15. All right, the 2 and the 15. Now here's the next place we have to pause and think. Which one's going to be the positive and which one's going to be the negative? Well, if you remember that when the signs are different, you subtract and take, you subtract the numbers and you take the sign of the bigger number. So our 13, our answer that we're trying to get to, is it positive or negative? Positive. So guess what? The bigger number, the bigger factor, has to also be positive. So that means which of those two numbers, the 2 or the 15, is going to be the positive? 15 is the positive. Now, 
once you plug it in, I would stop and think for a second, okay? Stop and just focus right there. What is 15 minus 2? Is that the number that's at the top of our x? Awesome. Because let's say that you messed up and you did a positive 2 and a negative 15. Well, if I stop and check, what's 2 minus 15? Negative. That's negative 13, and that's not what was at the top, so that would make me stop and switch it. All right? So once you plug it in, you can always stop and, and just double check it. But 15 is the positive because the answer we want is positive. Now, final answer, everyone is going to be what? Y plus 15. Times y minus, y minus 2. Again, we take the y squared, we split it up between the binomials, and we drop the plus 15 and the minus 2. Again, what if your paper says y minus 2 times y plus 15? Are you right? Yes. As long as the right number is with the right sign, you're in good shape. When we look at letter D, what type of polynomial are we working with? Trinomial. Trinomial and the leading coefficient is? One. So we drop that X and we start to figure out our signs, all right? What do we look at first in the original problem? The second sign. Go ahead and highlight it. Because the second sign is negative, Michaela, what will our signs be this time? Different. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in the different signs on either side. I'm going to do a plus and I'm going to do a minus. Now, what drops down into the top of our x? What is the coefficient of this time v negative one. that goes at the top? Negative 1. Very good. There's an understood 1 right there. And it is negative, so a negative 1 drops down to the top of our x. And Koi, what drops to the bottom of our x? Negative 42. The constant is negative 42. Now, we need the factors of which of those numbers? The 42. So over to the side, we're going to do 1 times 42. 2 times anything? 21. 3 times anything? 14. 4 times anything? 5 times anything? 6 times anything? All right, and 7 would repeat. So we are done. Now, the factors we choose, are we going to be adding them to get 1, negative 1? Are we going to be subtracting them to get negative 1? Subtracting. subtracting. So which set of factors can we subtract and get 1? Six, All right, great. But we got to stop and think because the signs are different. Which ones are positive and which ones are negative? Kyle. The 7 is, um, seven is negative. Six. Because... The answer that we're trying to get to is also a negative. So that 1 is negative, meaning the larger factor has to also be negative. So yes, and again, you can stop and check yourself right there. 6 minus 7 is negative 1, and that is absolutely what we were trying to get to. So final answer over here, Kyle, for you guys. Um, e plus 6. Good. We take the V squared. We give a V to each binomial, and we drop the plus 6 and the minus 7. That brings us to example number 2. And I want you to look at these directions, all right? It says solve the equation, and it tells you by factoring. Now, you had questions like this on your test yesterday, but all it said was solve the equation. What I need to make sure you understand is sometimes factoring is simply pulling out a what? You did this on your test yesterday. The GCF. That is a form of factoring. So you are actually today learning the second type of factoring. So I need you to understand that you sometimes all you have to do is pull out a GCF and then you can solve the equation. All right? But if you look at this problem, letter A, what has been set equal to zero? What type of a polynomial? A trinomial. And this trinomial has a leading coefficient of... One. So the factoring we've got to do today is not GCF related because the leading coefficient is a one. So this is the factoring that we've been working on today. This is going ahead and drawing your X. Now, I also want to point this out. If equals zero is supposed to be in the problem, it will already be there. Please, please, please do not try to go into example problems like example one and add an equal zero, all right? That's not your job. If it is a solving the equation problem, there will be an equal zero or an equal sign already in 
the problem, all right? So let's factor like we've been doing, and then we'll discuss what to do with the equal zero. All right, first things first, we're supposed to look at what in the trinomial first? The second sign. So the second sign is a positive, which tells us, uh, Megan, that our signs will what? Be the, same. Be the same. And how are we going to figure out what type of sign? Look back at the first sign. And so, Megan, that tells us that for this problem, our signs will both be what? Positive. positive. So we're going to fill those in. All right. Let's move through this quickly. What goes at the top of the X? Three. The coefficient of M, which is 3. And at the bottom? Two. We need the factors of two, which are one and two. Remember, we're not just going to blindly plug them in. We're still going to check because not factorable is an option. One, are we going to be adding one and two or subtracting one and two here? Adding because the signs are the same. And does one plus two give us the three we need? Yep. So we're going to plug in the one, plug in the two. So Kiana, final answer or final two binomials will be what? M plus one. M plus one times n plus 2. Now, we can't box this in because remember what I've always said, what I, we bring down what we have not used. Go back to the original problem. What have we not used yet? Zero. Equal 0. So we got to bring down the equal 0. Now, this should look familiar. Once the problem is factored, if it is set equal to 0, how do we finish and solve the equation? Each one equal to zero. Set each piece equal to 0. All right, set each piece. Now, the pieces that we're mentioning here, that we're talking about here, are the pieces that are being multiplied together. It's why we can't start this problem by going m squared equals 0 and 3m equals 0 and 2 equals 0 because those terms or pieces are being added together. Okay, The pieces that we are setting equal to 0 are the pieces being multiplied by each other. And that is the m plus 1 equals 0 and the m plus 2 equals 0. All right, how do we solve for the first m? Minus m. We subtract 1 from both sides, and so m equals one. negative 1, 1, negative 1. And how do we solve for the second m? Two. We subtract 2, and so m equals negative two. negative 2. And these are our final answers. So with the factoring is part of the steps, not the final answer this time, the final answers are m equals negative 1 and m equals negative 2. When you look at letter B, the first question you, you would probably start asking yourself, is this problem set up and ready to be factored? All right, why is this problem not even ready to be factored? Good. It's not set equal to 0. That's what I heard some of you say. Everything is not, a, there's not a trinomial all on one side, okay? So that is the first thing you would have to do. You have to get the entire a trinomial on one side and set equal to zero. So how could you very quickly do that? Subtract. subtract that 24. Now, when I subtract the 24, is it or does it have any like terms on the left side? No. no. So when I bring down the different terms on the left, does it matter what order I bring them down in? No. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. We want our trinomials in what form? Standard, Standard form. So order does matter. Remember standard form, highest exponent down to the lowest. So what would be the correct order to bring down the left side of the problem? N squared, minus 5n, minus, five n, minus 24. And it equals, there's nothing over on the right. So we got to bring down the equals zero. Now you can identify the type of polynomial, ask about the leading coefficient, and then go into your factoring. Now, let's identify the type of polynomial. Now that everything's on one side, set equal to zero, what type of polynomial are we dealing with? Trinomial and the leading coefficient? One. one. As soon as we identify that, we drop the x. Okay, we draw the x. The signs, how do we figure out the signs? We look at which sign in the uh, original problem? The second, right there, all right? I'd highlight it right there. And then the sign is negative. So what does that tell us about the signs in our problem? They are going to be different. Very good. So one's plus, one's minus. What goes at the top of our x? The coefficient of n. And what goes at the bottom? The constant. The constant, which is negative 24. Now remember, the constant is negative, but when we're listing the factors, we don't need to worry about that. All right, let's list the factors of 24. So 1 times 24, 2 times 12. 
Help me out. Three times eight. eight four times six. Five times anything? No. Nope. And six is already up there. All right. Are we going to be adding the factors or subtracting them this time? Subtracting. subtracting. The signs are different. So which set can we subtract and get a five? Three times eight. All right. The three and the eight. Now, you got to decide which one's positive, which one's negative. We need a five that is what? Negative. negative, which means the larger number needs to be negative. negative. So which number is going to be your negative? Eight. Eight is your negative and three is your positive. Again, double check it if you're not sure. Three minus eight is negative five, which is what we needed to get. So we drop down. What are the binomials going to be? N plus three times n minus 8, and we drop down what we have not used, which is equals zero. equals 0. Now we should be able to solve the equation, and how do we do that? Um, both sides equals zero. Not both sides, both parts. parts, both pieces, both factors, however you want to word it, but that's n plus 3 equals 0, and that's n minus 8 equals 0. How do we solve for the first n? Subtract three. We subtract 3, so n equals negative three and for here we for the second equation we add eight. add eight and n equals eight so these are your two final answers and that is lesson 7.5